Welcome to this video on using methods in Java. My name's Andy Wicks and in this brief video we're going to look at what a method is and what it does. A method is a collection of Java statements that do a particular job. You use them to make the main section of your program more logical. You use them to stop you writing the same code several times. You use them to break up the logic of your program into small, easy to understand pieces. And these small pieces can then be programmed more easily. They are commands. They're verbs that you create. In effect, you're adding new commands to Java. So, what types of methods are there? These are called modifiers. Well, you can have a method that's public. That can be seen by all classes. And since a program is a class, another program can see that class, and therefore a public method can be seen by another program. You can have private methods. It can only be seen within the class in which it was defined. Other programs cannot see it. And that's useful where you want to do a bit of work that you don't want the user to be able to mess around with. And finally, there are static methods. This can be public or private too, but a static method refers to the whole class and not to a specific member. So for example, sit test would refer to, say, a whole group of people, but a name would refer to a specific person within that group. Subroutines and functions. Methods are verbs. Some verbs just do things. So, for example, if I said to you, stand up, well, that would be called a subroutine if we were programming. Just do it. Others do things that have a result. Get my book. And in programming, this is called a function. Subroutines have a return type of void. All methods must have a return type. And if it has a return type of void, it's a subroutine. Just do it. If it has a return type of anything else, it's a function. And functions must have at least one return statement in the method. So there must be a return somewhere. And it's got to be of the type for that function. So if you declare the function as integer, it has to return something that is an integer. Arguments and parameters. This is sometimes a bit confusing because, again, it's terminology. Sometimes you need to give a method some information. Get my book from QM420. The room number is an argument to the command. In other words, a piece of information that helps the method do whatever it's required to do. I could have exactly the same command, get my book from, and a different room number. The room number is an argument to the command. The subroutine or function that defines how the task is performed calls this information a parameter. So, for example, the room number, which can vary from call to call is the parameter to that subroutine or function. The data types of the arguments and the parameters must be the same. So if the argument is a string, then the parameter in the method must be a string. If it's an integer, then the method must be an integer, and so on. Library methods. Java comes with a collection of classes that you can use in your programs. You've seen JOption pane, no doubt, many times, and there are many others. You can use this library of methods in your programs, and you don't have to write new versions yourself. They're quite useful. They've been written for you. Scope of variables. This is something that can be a bit confusing at first. Variables can only be seen in the class in which they're defined. This means that your program may have two variables with the same name in different parts of the program. 
and each of these can contain different information. Let me give you an example. You could have name in the class pet and that would be different to name in the class person. So your name and the name of your pet would be different. That makes sense.